right, we are live. And it is Tuesday night. We are back from uh, Christmas vacation, New Year's vacation. It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock Central Time. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Hey, everyone, it's Buddy with TBM Productions. And I have some great guys, some returning uh, guests, including Braylon with Funky Town Entertainment. I'm Kurt, DJ Dynablin, only from Australia. I like can't, I can't tell you that one, you know. Uh, DJ Coolton, of course, North Carolina. Uh, DJ Fire South, Nathan. South Carolina. South uh, Carolina. Right there in Central Illinois. Um, Matt, I'm hoping to ho he'll come back, come in later. He said he was supposed to be here, uh, DJ Salsas. And then um, next week, we're going to add a new DJ to the group. Uh, and that uh, DJ is uh, going to be a, a cool guy. He's up in Wisconsin. He's a pretty cool guy. And then coming to 31st, I'm going to actually have uh, DJ Rachel on here on the 31st. So, uh, wow, very good. There's going to be a lot of. Uh, It'd be cool to meet DJ Rachel. I've always loved her watching her videos and stuff. Or quite yeah. You think she's cute? You don't don't admi don't deny it. Yeah, that's his crush. <laughs> hey, I have a that's DJ crush. His name's DJ Rick Webb. He's like my. DJ Adler. Uh, come on, man. He's, he's like the one that got me into DJing other than my DJ friend, DJ Mike James, which I hope was to be in here tonight. But mm. Yeah, you know, it was actually DJ Bar that got me into gig logs. So it was because of DJ Bar that I got into mm. gig logs. And that's the thing is, is who who actually pushes me into stuff. So a couple things things uh, I know we we're talking a little before the show. Mm. And uh, for you guys out there watching right now live, uh, I am a little bit under the weather. I'm just getting over. I'm an upswing of being sick for my last gig. And we'll, we'll talk a little about gigs in a minute or two uh, about how we finished up the year. Um, but one of the things we're talking about here, and Kurt actually brought it up, uh, if you have, if you're lucky, like myself, this is my office is a spare room in our house. It's a, we have a three-bedroom house, and I'm blessed to have a spare bedroom that we have an office. Behind this magic curtain behind me, you guys always see, is a treadmill. <laughs> so there's no magic stuff here. It's not like I have a huge corporate office or something like that. Uh, some people, you know, do this, uh, you know, in their living room or in their kitchen. So we all have different areas. Cool thing's got a cool man cave. Kurt's got, I, I has a room for it. I know DJ Fire has his office. Uh, Brandon, I think you have an office too, right? You have a bedroom you use? Uh, yeah, it's just a bedroom. It's not like a... Yeah, we, it, we're all small there. business people. We're not big millionaires multi-millionaires maybe maybe cool thing is because he's a, he is a big youtuber or maybe dj fire is he's always gonna hide but, you know that, yeah, that if you guys that. haven't uh if you guys haven't done so uh i've got three channels uh, and i'm actually working on while while buddy's talking i'm looking up some information uh on a historic site that i came across in my area I, I've I've always loved history history huh, history, history. <laughs> <laughs> uh, since since school I I always slept through social studies but history was one of the classes that I always stayed awake for but um, there is a uh, what's called the AT and T Long Lines Tower info or Long Lines Tower. It was used during the Cold War back in the 1940s and 50s. Uh, there is one of those sites in my area, um, and it's weird. There's a bunker silo underneath this place. It's rated for a nuclear attack. There's all kinds of cool Cold War signs hanging all over the fencing and everything. It's pretty cool. I'll be releasing that video on my product review channel that I do vlogs on tomorrow, hopefully, if I can get all the information I need tonight. But So, uh, this is a sidetrack from the show, but I also am a, a, a kind of a, um, a fanboy of the long lines uh, sites. And I actually have a map of a lot of sites. So, if you give me the address where it's at, I can add it to my map of long line sites. And it's, it's a very interesting story how they used to do long distance back from the basically the late 40s to all the way up almost to the uh, mid-90s. And they had microwave yeah, towers this... that every 25 miles transmit a microwave signal from one tower to another tower. Not only tel not only tel uh, t uh, telephone, also transmit television. So the networks like here in the United States, NBC, ABC, CBS, national networks would transmit on that signal so that way, everyone got this information at the same time before satellites. 
Now I was, I'm going to kind of do, probably do a video about it too, kind of taking how um, technology for DJs, I'm kind of going to use this has evolved. Like I'm sure there was DJs back in the 1940s. They used record players and they used, you know, Time eight index. tracks, nine tracks, whatever they called them. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I want to get <coughs> kind of starting with that and going up to where we are today. I know that's going to be kind of a longer video, but if you guys have anything tracks, you guys would like to add. tracks like a track uh cassettes and stuff like that and uh tapes and i don't think really mobile music providers use that records yeah records yeah but see uh, tapes yeah. usually no uh CD, but yeah CD. if you, uh, nathan you and i got to talk about that stuff later i have a, a I, I i'm i'm a kind of fanboy of that area it's kind of interesting how uh you know it it, it makes me think about hmm why did he do that? And I, I did a lot of research on it, so I got to share that with you. It's a lot of real great information. I give you a lot of resources that. But before we came in here, we were talking about how we were organized as DJs and uh, what, what gigs are there. And Matt actually brought up a great thing he has in his office, as well as cool things that he has in his office, is a whiteboard, you know, basically, you know, dry eraser board on the side. And uh, Braylon, how do you... Uh, how do you do your organization? Do you have a, a whiteboard or do you have a, a book or? So I don't have a whiteboard or anything. I basically just, um, I use a little bit of, you know, technology, like a tech, like, like a computer calendar, as well mm -hmm. as um, an actual hard copy Spot. calendar. I like to make sure that they're both there because if for some reason I lose my electronic one for some odd reason, mm -hmm. you know, if technology crashes, burns, I delete it accidentally. I have the hard copy one. It's foolproof. Um, so I have, that's kind of what I do. I just have them both on both sides and I'm good to go. Yeah, I'm just like you. I keep my gigs also on here on the iPhone calendar so I can keep up to date even on the go. Very nice. And uh, I actually leave, I actually leave a little note on my fridge as well, handwritten gig tonight. Don't forget. <laughs> and, uh, I wake Nathan, up in the morning on notes there. <laughs> Nathan, how do you do it? How do you uh, keep track of everything going on? Um, well, I know you can't see me right now. I'm messaging someone. Uh, but uh, I actually just ordered a desktop calendar. Uh, I have, I'm working on getting my Google uh, deal linked to my Facebook. Uh, so when people book um, through my Facebook, I've booked, I've got 13 gigs booked so far this year. Uh, so I'm actually going to be fairly busy this year, it sounds like, uh, starting mid-spring. And, uh, I've, well, I've got some stuff booked in the spring and in the fall so far. I haven't got nothing booked in the summer yet. But um, I got that. I've also got a planner uh, book that I keep. Anytime I book someone, I write it down. So, you know, I as I go through, <clears throat> um, you know, the days, write stuff down. Uh, I've got my excel thing i have on here i as i book someone i jot it down my excel is also on my phone so if there's anything it's kind of like i set it up for a calendar so it notifies me daily if there's something on there um that's pretty much it yeah calendars and google and we have we have a dry erase board in the living room that's uh actually is a calendar it has the spots where you write the dates you write the month and then we go through there at the beginning of each month and figure out what everybody has in the family going on. And then we just write it all down. So four or five times a day when I pass that, I see it. So that, that, That's kind of like uh, what Tracy and I do because <laughs> between uh, our gigs and everything else in life, like, you know, family, everything else, uh, we write down when we're having meetings with customers we know, we're reminded we go with it. We also have, like with us, we have books. And, you know, I, I want I, I kind of want to do a dry erase board. Um, I just haven't done it yet. And also, where do I put it? Because I, I, like, right behind my computer screens is the wall. And <clears throat> I have to stand up, like, reach way or far away to touch a wall. So it's not practical. And then next to me is a window. <laughs> Unless I put the like, dry erase board like below the window that I'm right in, almost down on my knees, you know, so it's not fun. So I, I, I there's some logistics I would have to figure that one out. But 
it's one of the things that I believe that being organized is an important thing being a DJ because if you're having, we're all small business people. We we have a small business and that business is a customer service based business. And it is very, very strong that we make sure that we have dates and everything covered. And if something happens, redundancies and so forth and so on. Well, one of the things to make sure that you're organized, if someone's hiring, it doesn't matter if it's for a birthday party or wedding or whatever the event is, you want to make sure that you have that. And I think that everyone here has the organization and everybody does maybe a little bit different, but that organization helps out tremendously, especially with making sure you're available for a day. Because I know how, what happens with me and I, I'm I, I, Bre, uh, Braylon, I don't know if it happens to you. If you're, uh, you're, on, uh, you're in a knot, right, Braylon? You're on, on the knot.com? Uh, I was, yeah, I was. Not new, not was. currently, though. You, you're, yeah, you, you have a, you, but you have a free spot on a knot, right? You still have your correct, free spot. Correct, correct, yeah. You're not paying for it anymore. So, like, when I get uh, information from the knot, when they send me a request for service through the knot, um, I want to make sure I'm available. So that's one of the things, is, it's those quick looks going, okay, fine, great. Why am I, why am I book that day? And I can go into my book. My book is, you know, basically right over there. Or I can look at my emails. My emails, I have a uh, area in my emails. They're all lined up by date for, uh, you know, every year. So I can look and go, okay, fine, great. All these emails from these people, it has a customer's name. It has a date of the wedding. So it has the first and last names of the couple and the date. So I can even go in my email and look at that folder and email and say, okay, fine, great. The Smith and Jones wedding is you know january 1st you know whatever the date is i'm just throwing dates out there and names mm. and that way you know i can when someone asks me are, are you available i can say 100 yes or no and then i also double check with tracy with stuff because again <clears throat> she works with me to make sure that hey you know what uh you guys need to come up for this date because you know she does things she goes to concerts goes to hawks games but also her, uh, her regular job, if she's got to do something there, or, you know, even with our, you know, family, there's something going on. I just double check real quickly. But the key thing is there is that organization. That That is a huge, huge, huge thing, which mm. I, I know, I know uh, Nathan said you touched on, he's got 13 gigs for this year so far. How organized are you for this year? If someone came to you right now, how quickly could could you get back to that customer and say, I'm available X, Y, Z, or I'm available or not available? On your I, I literally just did it as you were talking, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I actually just had a, so I had my email. I'm not sure where they would have found necessarily my email. It could have been through my website, could have been through the, my Facebook page, whatever. Um, but I just had a bride reach out to me. She, she's talking about a quote unquote last minute wedding in March. Um literally as you were talking, I was maybe looking down this right right this corner right here. And I responded quickly with a, yeah, hey, I'm available. I'd love to be the DJ for your event, blah, 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 and answer the questions that she had. So mm. that's a prime in real time example, I guess. Mm. <laughs> and right good. there is, is is a key thing. What, what about you, Kurt? How fast usually do you, can you get back to someone? Um within half an hour to an hour, but I'm lucky because I live in a smaller um, town where I've got less competition, you know, whereas if I was in a big city, you'd have to be right on it. You'd have to be within 10 minutes, my opinion. Otherwise, you're going <laughs> to miss the job. What, what about you, uh, Nathan? Uh, what, what are we talking about? Sorry, I'm working on this video. <laughs> Always working on videos. Uh, yeah, well, I found, I found, you were, yeah, we're found talking about really how cool fast you can site. respond. I have found a really cool site that lists the addresses and where every single one of these towers are. So I'm going through and looking at them all over the United States. Pretty cool. What was the question again? So <laughs> how quickly can you get back to someone and say if you're available for a date or not? Uh, normally when somebody messages me on my Facebook page, it automatically sends me a notification that someone's messaged me. Um, I have an automatic response that sends them instantly. I mean, as soon as they, send the message, they get one that says, uh, Hey, thank you for contacting us. Um, 
we would love to help you with your events uh, or something like that. Uh, we are currently helping other customers or something. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. Most of the time I respond to them. I think my response time, it says on there, is generally within three minutes. So um, I don't really get it. I'll say, you know, uh, most of the stuff I have in my head, I know when my dates are booked. Now, I haven't booked my fall. I've got seven gigs for one place um, during the football season. I'm going to be doing a fifth quarter uh, dance for high school kids um, after the football games, but we don't know exactly when those football game dates are. So once they find those out, I'll be booking those. But so I kind of have in my head, Friday nights are going to be kind of booked um, during football season. But, you know, I kind of just know in my head, unless I've got a lot booked, like I know you guys book almost probably every weekend. I don't. Um, but uh, I don't get booked every weekend either. It's just every once well, in a while. Well, I mean, I, and I, that doesn't bother me that I don't get booked every weekend. I have a lawn care business, and sometimes I like to take an extra weekend to do a giant landscaping job or something. You know, I can get extra people in and stuff like that. But Well, yeah, you, you have multiple businesses going on, so it, it's harder for you. And, you know, that's <laughs> something I know, Kurt, you have a full-time job. Uh, Braylon, you have a full-time job too, correct? So I do indeed, yes. I do this <clears> full-time. <throat> This is this is my full time mm. job. Um, mm. it, it's I, I concentrate on the DJ business full time, so I'm kind of blessed in the fact that I can react pretty quickly. But you know, if mm. someone comes to you, uh, uh, Hunter, and says, "Hey, you know what? Um, are, are you available?" I'm, I'm throwing a date out there. I, I'm just throwing a generic <laughs> date out there. June first of this year, and they, they text you or email you. However, way to get a hold of you. How long do you usually it takes you to get back around to them? You know, you figure out if they open a date or not. Well, a split second. As soon as it comes through, I'm on it. I'm on. So it. you're you're on top of them pretty quickly, and I'm on top of things. I'm on top of things yeah, and that's and one of the things is you know, that's you part of being organized. Me. I can look pretty quickly, and yeah. the knot has a little screen that pops up and it tells you across the top. That you know, if you want the uh, the fastest or the most um, uh, closure of sales for customers, do it within two hours. I try to get back to people as quickly as I possibly can, unless I'm already at a gig, I'm or I'm doing something I'm driving. You know, there's times I can't get back to them in you know within minutes. It could be a couple hours, but I always try to get back to people fairly quickly uh, because of the fact that to start that line of communication. And if you like, you again, with, with Braylon right there, he, you know, he has a, a bride come to him going, Hey, Braylon, I want funky town here in Timmy to do my wedding. Uh, are you available this date? He can then look, go, okay, fine. Great. Am I available? You know, where's it at? And get the information and go, okay, fine. Great here. This is what we're looking at and start that conversation. And to me, that's an important thing as a, DJ is, is you have someone coming. It's like having a retail store. Someone comes into your door to buy whatever. It could be phone cases. It could be whatever you're selling. And if someone comes walking in the door to buy your product, how quickly do you acknowledge them? How quickly do you talk mm -hmm. to them? And how quickly do you get them, you know, answer questions? Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. quicker that you are on that, the bigger the likelihood is of closure of that sale, but also it shows your customers that you care and you concentrate on that if you can. And even if you send a quick message, hey, you know what? I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm driving right now. Uh, when I get back to the office, I'll get back to you at, you know, five o'clock tonight. You know, when I get back home, mm. I'll, I'll contact mm -hmm. you then. Even something like that, especially a direct message through, you know, Instagram or Facebook or whatever direct message the system is. It was coming through, through a, a third party system like, the knot or wedding wire or one of the other services, you have a little more lead way, but I have like a, a preset pre-done uh, messages that I can send out. And it's, you know, it's, it's like, you know, may, it, it, like one of the ones I have is as main on it. And it's, it's, it's pre set, you know, it's saying, Hey, you know, I always put the person's name, put the date in there. It takes a few seconds to, to, to get everything taken care of. And I always get back to them pretty quickly. So that way I'm asking when I'm setting the date up, when can when can I talk to you? Because I want to find out more information. 
Because the information you're getting is very basic from the customer nine times out of 10. You may get a date, mm -hmm. you may get a venue, you may get, you know, a person's name, you may get the partner's name, but you may not get all the information. You know, you may not know how many people they have. They may not know, is it multiple rooms? Is it one room? And they have a ceremony on site, they have a ceremony off site. Those kind of things are the kind of fine tune things. Um, so it might be a ven venue you don't want to go to also. So. <laughs> Or a venue that it's so difficult that you need to bring in extra help. You need you know mm. uh, that I know I know Braylon, you did a, a a wedding at one of the barns. I go back to I go back to this one your video on YouTube. <laughs> and by the way, everyone, all these guys have YouTube channels. Uh, Nathan has like sixteen thousand YouTube channels. Uh, don't be lying to people. Uh, <laughs> it's seventeen hundred. Yeah, I'm I got sorry, seventeen hundred. Uh, mm -hmm. But he has a bunch of them. Uh, so I will make sure that on, if you're watching this on YouTube, the, the links will be to their YouTube channels. Make sure you go to your YouTube channels, all of them. Make sure you follow, like, subscribe, and you know follow that. And make sure if you're watching this, click the like button down below. Put some comments down in the comment section. You know, hit that like button and follow the, follow this because again, we we I'm giving this information out, and everyone here is spending their, their Thursday nights. Uh, on here on Twitch or whatever day you're watching on YouTube, we're spending this time to make sure that we're trying to pass our information on to you and help you become better DJs. And when you have great talent like DJ Cool Thing and 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 Brylin and you know Dynablan and uh, Fire and you know when we have Matt in here and we have all these great people coming in, I want to you know use their time wisely, but also. They gave great information and have not get great information to spread to you guys. It, it, the way to thank them is follow them and watch their gig logs. But one of the gig logs I know I, I go back to is the one barn wedding you had. That the ceremony was probably, I want to say, 100 feet away outside in kind of a little prairie area. And then you had the barn and you had both ends of the barn open. It was hot and you're kind of stuck in a corner. Um, when you talk to a client and you're trying, you're finding information out, is that something you talk about beforehand? Like, hey, you know what? Especially to a venue you've never been to before, uh, where are you putting me at? Where are you doing this? At? Where are you doing that? Do you do you run into that or? Yeah, I mean, so the process I have is whenever we get to that point of you know they book me and things like that. I do ask them questions, you know, regarding the venue, like where is the venue, what's the name, things like that. And then I ask them, uh, usually they tell me by that time if I'm going to be providing ceremony audio and all that. Um, so at that point, I'll ask them like, hey, is, is, the, um, is it going to be on site? Is it going to be off site? Um, what's the situation? Is it going to be inside, outside? Um, a lot of the venues here in Texas, they do, you know, if weather permitting um, ceremonies outside, nice pretty tree or nice pretty setup and things like that with seating and then we move it on inside um it's just kind of what i'll call kind of standard for the clientele that i have um so yeah i mean that that ceremony was just like about about 100 feet or so off in, in the grass and stuff like that um luckily though this venue did for the ceremony setup they had outlets everywhere they had like outlets on all the trees i i even made a comment <laughs> on my gig log i was like I said, this venue did a great job with the ceremony portion for DJs, at least. So I was happy about that. Yeah, I know where you're coming from. We have a lot of barn weddings here, a lot of um, outdoor, uh, you know, events. And sometimes it gets really, really, really hot here in the summer and spring and early fall that my gear <clears> just, <throat> freezes, just freezes up. And sometimes they put me in direct sunlight with no shade. Right. <laughs> yeah, that, that sinks. That's one of the things always talking to the venue and talking to a couple about that. Hey, uh, Kurt, you down in Australia, when you talk to clients down there, I'm getting, I'm, I'm guessing you do a lot of the same things we do here in the States. But, um, and I like where I know that a lot of times you have a separate MC, another person comes and actually talks on the mics. Um, not all the time, but sometimes, you know, I, I know not all the time. The thing down there than here. Um, but what are some of the other unique things you run into when you talk to a client down in Australia that you may ask you that we may not ask up here that you kind of, you know, and you know this is an Australian thing. Um, I sort of just get the basics. Where where is it? What venue is it? Um, what sort of vibe they want? 
how many people is a good one because down here normally weddings are a lot smaller um you know like a common wedding here in my area should be 70 70 to 90 people so um i prefer to do the bigger weddings but that's just me um i know like a common wedding for you guys is 100 to 200 guests or more um what else do i ask uh, 130 is usually my average what what about you cool thing what do you average on a wedding size well i don't really count the people no so probably less than 100 or so okay and then uh, Braylon, what what about you? What do you usually get for? I usually get on average anywhere from like that 100 to 150 range, some sub that. But um, the events for weddings, though, I haven't done a wedding more than 200, just based on my clientele. But I've done like corporate events and things for like 400, <laughs> like so. But yeah, it's it's a, it is a good question to ask because you know, the bigger the venue, the more people, obviously, the more audio gear you need, you know, am I going to bring subwoofers, um, different different rooms the venue might have, am I, am I going to need a satellite speaker, you know, am I going to have to spread my speakers, so that's why I always ask how many people. That, that's um, one of the things I look at is like the, the wedding I did this year, at the Tilly Park Convention Center, I um, put the speakers. Usually, I, I, I try and give a little room. I, if you if you look if you go to my you know Instagram, you go to that stuff. You see pictures of our setup. Speaker stuff is spread out, and I like to have room because I want to fill sound, especially the room stuff like that. Yep. And these were pretty far out the speakers to cover, and it was 200 and, 230, 240 people. And I would was said the room is huge. I would have said if it would have been more than that, they were if they were three hundred people, I would have done an extra set, and then four speakers versus just the two. But even with the two speakers, and there's video again. I have it on YouTube. Uh, talk about the hysterics. But if you're out there, you see the couple on the dance floor, and the dance floor is like forty feet away from where I'm at. And the, you hear the music, and you hear the people singing. It's it's like you know you hear that perfect blend of audio come from the system. You hear the bass, and it's not overpowering, but the thing is that it's that right pleasant feel to it. And that to me is a big thing. Asking how many people you have, so you make sure you don't have too much sound. <laughs> not enough sound is huge. Yeah, a lot of venues here in South Carolina, I can just do just fine with twelve inch tops, and it does just fine. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I also think I also think a huge thing a huge thing is the room, in my opinion. It's not necessarily the amount of people. A lot of I think a lot of us DJs we look at well, how many people are going to be in the room. I really think it has to do with you need to know what the room is. If the ceilings are super high, I mean that adds a whole different dimension of how much sound you need. Things like that. Like don't get me wrong. Oh yeah, human bodies absorb and... sound. They absorb yeah. sound, yeah. but like it, the room size um, that plays a big role. Also, is it carpeted or is it is it tile? Is it um, marble? <laughs> you know, the echo what? can be an absolute nightmare in some venues. Right. Yeah, I, I love I love I love wood structures because the wood absorbs the sound yeah. nice. Right. It doesn't yeah. have reflective sound. You don't have echoes with a a barn per se. We're lost, Nathan. buddy. DJ Fire. <laughs> so we lost DJ you for fire. a second there, buddy. <laughs> we uh, You were frozen for a second, so we didn't oh, catch okay. what you said. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, there we go. You're talking about wood absorbing, and then you went you went frozen. <laughs> wood, wood is great because the fact that you don't get the reflection of sound, mm. it's not bouncing all over the place. You don't get the uh, echoes, and you don't have to worry about fighting the mic and fighting EQ the whole night and riding the EQ. Uh, when people talk and that to me is a, a huge thing when you do barn weddings and they're natural raw wood it's great versus a concrete bunker you know uh, that's yep. you know yep. designed for world war three that's you know, got four foot <laughs> concrete floors and yep. you're, the one of the venue i just did in rockford illinois on new year's eve that is a uh, lack for a better term almost like a concrete <laughs> bunker it's a building built in the 1950s all concrete it was the um 
Unite Auto Workers Union Hall for Northern Illinois. And the building is was again built in like in the 50s, and it's just concrete floors, concrete walls. Uh, building's two floors tall, but it's like you go in there and it's just every there's there everything reflects. There's no baffling you, in there. You there's honestly baffling. almost probably what need the bodies in the room because yeah. I don't know if I'm setting an EQ for a microphone, especially on like a lav pack. It's feeding back when no one's in the room, but once the bodies are in there, it helps me allow to uh, be able to have yep. more headroom. So I'm like, where are the people that I need them? <laughs> so yep, yep. DJ Fire, how about you? How do you, how do you do it? How do you? My phone is froze. Give me a second. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> when you froze, my phone froze. I can hear you guys, but I don't. It's know all DJ Fire's fault. We'll blame DJ Fire. I don't know where I can hear you guys, but I don't know where my Zoom app literally went. Like it's gone. Oh wow! I'm going through all my apps. Oh wait, hold on. Oh, the... Yeah. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Woo, since there we're, we go. Yeah. Since we're talking about venues, this is basically this is the type of wood that's like the type of wall that's all around the uh, venue. Yeah. Mm. Is, is that the one you always go? You're usually at the. Um... The Shriners uh, Hall. Yeah this, yeah, this is yeah, this is the Shrine Club, and this picture was taken <laughs> back in twenty twenty one. Yeah, I, I know you all been to the Shrine, yeah. Shriners Hall a lot. Yeah. yeah, all all my yeah, all my wedding photos were taken in twenty twenty one, not in twenty twenty two. So I'm gonna ask you guys this one. I'm gonna start with Nathan on this one. Now we know we all have places that we kind of we know that we we we'll go to no problem. We know we're getting into. We know it's a more difficult facility because of xyz fill in the blank whatever it is but we also have those facilities that we love going to because it's just so easy to <laughs> load in load out put stuff in put stuff out uh staff there is just really phenomenal they're very helpful they're very warm and, and caring when you have someone that comes to you and wants you to do a wedding at a facility that's more difficult and then you have another customer asking for the same date uh. at a facility that's much more comfortable. And you again, you get both emails come in within a second of each <laughs> other. Hi, my name is so-and-so. I'm at fill in the blank for the place that you don't like. Okay. And then a few seconds later, another person comes in and says, hi, I'm so-and-so at, at one of those places that you love. Do you tend to go to the first person first? And say, okay, fine, great. You got it first. You won the race and take it. Or do you look at and try and evaluate and, and evaluate, hey, this is this this facility is more difficult to deal with. I'm not I'm not a fan for it versus this facility here, which is much easier to deal with, much easier to get in and out. What what do you do with that kind of situation? I'm not that uh, lucky. For me, I'll book the crappy venue. And then half an hour later, the other customer will be like, oh, I've got a wedding in, in your favorite venue. <laughs> Sorry, I'm booked. What about you, Nathan? What, what, what happens with you? It pretty much goes by who gets their deposit in first. Um, like I've, I've had a few people message me, and I was like, well, I've got somebody else wanting this date too. So the, the person that gets their deposit to me the fastest – it's that day. First so, serve. And the cool the cool thing is with me and DJ Mike James being friends, if I have somebody that's wanting to book um a date, say like no, say October 10th or something. I don't know what October 10th falls on this year, but just say it was October 10th. And then somebody else calls me the next day or messages me and says, Hey, uh needing a DJ, I was wanting you to DJ for me for October 10th. I'm gonna be like, Well. Um, I think I'm booked, but I have another DJ friend that's real close to me. He has a great setup. He'll treat you just right. Let me give you his number and I'll just give him a mic or I'll send him the link to, you know, that, or I'll be like, Hey, I've got somebody else that's talked to me, but they haven't paid their deposits. Um, which actually, <clears throat> I don't know what it is. I've had two people this year. I took them, you know, I met with them. I was like, here's my paperwork, here's my contract, uh, I need you to sign it, basically says that the deposit's non-refundable. Uh, if something happens weather-wise or big storm or one of y'all gets sick, we can reschedule. It says that I'll work with you on scheduling and blah, blah, blah. So I went, 
met with two people so far this spring and they both done this to me. And I was like, what's the deal here? Like y'all trying to tell me how to run my business and how you want me to do things. That's not how it works. So when I book someone, they pay a 50% deposit. So if I book someone for 1200 bucks, they give me 600 bucks. That, that covers their date. That covers, <clears throat> nobody else can take that date. And then normally 30 days before the event, I generally like to have the other deposit. Now, I like to be paid in full before I show up to any event. I don't know how you all do that, but I don't want to show up to an event and then after the event be trying to find a drunk person to get paid because I know people that's done that. And they've waited three or four hours after the venue or after the deal or at least two hours or an hour trying to get paid. You know, they're, they're ready. You know, we're ready to go yeah, home after the event. <laughs> Not me. I get paid beforehand, no matter what. Right. And um, I did actually do a pub gig once where they gave me the runaround, and they, you know, every two hours I had to check in. You know, can I get paid, please? Oh no, you know, we haven't got enough cash in the till, and this and that, and every excuse under the sun. And um, yeah, I don't want to go through that again. So always yeah, get paid uh... before before the gig. <clears throat> So, so anyway, I gave him my paper. He saw the, you know, put the deposit down and then the rest it says on there 30 days before. And he goes, one of the guys goes, and he's sitting there next to his fiance and he goes, so this is what I want to do. He said, I'll pay you the deposit. That's not a problem. He said, but I want to pay you the remainder after the event. And I said, well, then I won't be there. He said, what do you mean? I said, you pay me in full or I don't show up. And you pay your deposit. And if you do not pay the rest of your deposit, I don't show up and it says that in paper and you can take that to court or anything and try to say that I stole your money and it don't open court because you signed the uh you know the paperwork but he finally agreed and he said all right I see he's like well I just I just want to make sure that you you know you're going to do a great job I said I haven't had any complaints so far I said if you you know you booked me because of what you've seen on YouTube so and all the other people I had a few other people tell you that you know I was good and another person did the same thing. They actually didn't want to pay me anything until the after the event. And I was like, ah, then find somebody. He's like, well, everybody else we're talking to, uh, we don't have to pay until after the event. And I'm like, well, then go book them, you know, or or I'll get this a lot too. Um, what's your price? What would you charge for, a, you know, a wedding? We need you for eight hours <clears throat> and we just need you for a reception or we need you for six hours for the reception we don't need you for ceremony and i'm like uh, well these are my packages i have a thousand dollar i have a read you yourself be there there you go yeah. see, you, you don't want to show your pricing on, on air there you go see there's, there's ah. the pricing ah. well I, I i was not what was my spot on. Tried to call me but uh and then I have like an $1,800 package, which is my full setup. And I used to be a lot cheaper than that. And I told them that, you know, he said something about, well, you're going to bring your big gold pulse dress. I said, well, that's $1,800. Oh, well, you can't give me a better deal. No, you asked me what my prices are. And that's what my prices are. Well, we've got these other people who said they'd do it for like 750, 800 bucks. I'm like, then go with them. You ain't going to get my setup for 750, 800 bucks. I'm sorry. Why don't you come in here that's... and help me? That's one of the things that, you know, you're, <clears throat> unfortunately, we all run into those people who are the, the, the penny chasers, the diamond, you know, they're, they're not the diamonds, they're not the, the platinum cuspers, they're the pet people who <laughs> basically want to chase after a penny and say they want to be really cheap. And, you know, we run into that. And instead of them saying, hey, I want good quality, I want, I see what you're doing, and I want to put that money into services from you. And again, you, you can watch stuff. That's the great thing about having stuff on YouTube, what everyone here has. You can send customers there and say, hey, go look what I have. Go to my social media, look what I have there, and see what you're paying for, what you're getting. You're getting someone who knows what they're doing. You know, Hunter has stuff uh, we have on uh, Mixcloud. Um, yeah, which I stopped doing because they changed their guidelines and stuff. Okay. I'm pretty much full because the whole thing was full so i can't okay. post it but you you should have you should have mixes up there right yeah i did so he, he can send the people to, uh, to mix cloud here and mix <laughs> you know i do uh, on here on twitch i go live here on twitch and and video dj um you know i have youtube uh, cool thing of youtube we all have youtube channels you know so 
uh, you know, Braylon has a YouTube channel, you know, Kurt's got a YouTube channel, Nathan's got a YouTube channel. We all have YouTube channels. We all have social media, and we want to send customers there to see it. But when those people come into you and they, you talk to them and you you go, okay, who who's first or who's second? And, you know, again, Nathan, you said whoever gets to deposit you quicker. Uh, Dynamite mm-hmm. said you had the luck that you'd hire to get, you'd take the cut, the customer that comes in that has the, the venue you're not a fan for and the venue you love. You got, you can't have that. Uh, Braylon, what about you? Do you, you go to the, you, if both of them came at the same time, <laughs> wait the two out and see which one is actually more feasible, or do you look at one who makes more money, or you look at what's easier, or what, how do you do it? I mean, for me, if I had it in a perfect world, if, if I could get a feel for which couple I feel I'd want to work with more, uh, like if I have a couple that, like you said, is going to be nickel and diming you and stuff like that, are going to be very nitpicking specific on certain things that, you know, maybe as DJs are like, oh, those things don't actually fully matter kind of deal. I'd go with a couple <laughs> that I feel that I have a good relationship with um, if I could have it in a perfect world. Now, you could also go chase the money. That's fine as well. But if everything was equal, though, if everything was equal, couples were as cool as the, like both of them were the same amount of cool, we'll say, and then the same amount of price. I would probably pick the venue that I prefer, um, just because I feel comfortable comfortable there, things like that. Um, and you want to be comfortable out of a venue, I mean, you want to be comfortable, you want to have that confidence in you. So I think that would help for sure. What about you? Uh, cool thing. If two people came to you at the same time and said, "Hey, you know what? Uh, I want we want to hire you." <laughs> for a wedding or a party or whatever the gig is, do you, and they came at the same time, do you go to the place that's easier to deal with that you, or the place that, that you like, or do you go to the place that's maybe a little more difficult because that person came in first? I just go with um, whoever comes first. First come, uh, first serve? Yeah, first come, first serve. Well, it, I actually had that happen to me back in September. I was supposed to DJ... At my old church, Beach Church, which I'm now in a new church, um, we were supposed to do their. I was supposed to DJ the parents night out, but I had a Latin festival, so I go. I went with the Latin festival, and that's the only time. I mean, I'm not really that lucky when they have two people come up to me Is, you know, during the same that's time. That's the that's the gig you done where you were on that stage outdoors and oh, the sun. It, it wasn't really a stage; it was more of a trailer. Oh, yeah, a metal trailer. It was it was out. Out in the hot sun. Call it a stage. Didn't you get oh, sunburned? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you use air quotes to call it a stage. You know, a, a mobile uh, stage, yeah. you know. Yeah, it, it's, but it's mostly a um, um, trailer, like you would pull on a car. So, or it, it was outdoors. Oh, and you got yeah. you got you got sunburnt. I did. <laughs> it went away after a few days or so. Um, so yeah, you know, like if you've got the choice between an outdoor gig and an indoor gig, uh, or, or a gig that's going to cost you a whole heap of money and a gig that's going to be cheaper. Well, both you know, of them were which... free. Yeah, both of them were free because it was a church gig. It's considered volunteer work. So, uh, yeah. but they did pay me, yeah, but they did pay me just for me to get, you know, for being there, like gas and stuff. Okay, what, what's, your, what's your question, Nathan? Okay, so I've got, there's a new venue that opened up in Mattoon. Oh, it's not really a new venue. It's a hotel, but they have a, what do you call it? Like a reception hall slash event center area mm-hmm. in there. And I've got I've got the first wedding in there since they've opened. It's, it's in, it's one of my first weddings this year. And... <clears throat> the couple was wanting me to bring in my fog slash hazer machine. And I was like, well, with that being a hotel, they're going to probably have smoke alarms that are sensitive and uh, that are connected to an alarm company. We don't need a fire department showing up to y'all's wedding <laughs> unless you want them to, but you can call them and tell them to come. You don't have to get 911 to dispatch them. But so I went in there and looked at the venue and <clears throat> the guy told me, we had a guy in here for New Year's, and he had all kinds of fog, and it didn't set him off. I was like, okay, well, my machine's a lot bigger, more powerful. Um, I really don't want to set the alarm off at these people's <laughs> wedding, but they're wanting me to bring this machine in, and the people that work there seem to think it's not going to set them off. I mean, the ceilings are probably 
12 to 15 feet high. Now, Nathan, that do you are, have a fog machine or do you have a haze machine? Because there's a difference. I have the ADJ Entourage. I don't know what that one is. Is it? Do you know if it's yeah. fog or if it's haze? It's a I'm giant. Sure. It's a. It's a. It's a haze machine, but it takes fog fluid, and it's in a flight case. I can actually. I was gonna, I was gonna say because that also plays a big role in it too. I mean, that, the, the DJ juice. that did New Year's, if he was doing haze, that's more of a water base, so therefore mm. it's not going to set off your alarms. But if you have just straight shouldn't fog theory, juice, shouldn't in theory. Shouldn't in theory. It right? doesn't. It doesn't. Come, <laughs> I'm trying to find a picture of it here. What, yeah, what is in, that, in that situation, I would just say check with the venue. I mean, you did the right thing. You did your part. If I mean, check with the venue to make sure things are okay, so that way it's not a no the day of. It's a it's a no you know weeks prior. I think that's just it's kind of just covering your own covering your right. own. put in put in the contract um, that you're not liable for uh, any sort of escalation. <laughs> yeah, but also leave the leave the fog for later in the night just in case it does happen all right here it is right here if i can get it to load all right so flip my how do you flip the camera out there it is oh dang it ad popped up there we go come on flip. so this is what i've got <laughs> it's called the it's basically a flight case it's got a bottle that you put fog fluid in it and then it's got different you can control it with DMX. I just normally set it on like five to ten percent volume, and I put the fan speed at like twenty, so it's just barely faintly coming out of there. But it's got a you know a deal on there that you can adjust. You can aim it to where it shoots it up, or you can fold this down and it shoots it out. Yeah, but if you were just to manage it all night and just kind of keep an eye, and if you see it get a little too foggy, you just kill it for about twenty minutes. You're probably fine. Yeah, I mean I. I'm going to, uh, you know, hopefully talk to the actual owner and see what, uh, see what, you know, they suggest. But he said he had somebody in there before. I mean, I could, uh, I could tell him, hey, if them fire alarms go off, it is not my fault. <laughs> That's the thing is the liability and who gets charged for the fire department come out for the false call and the yeah. alarm company and so forth. So <laughs> the last thing you want to do is have that charge either to the venue to the couple or to yourself for the fire department coming out and saying hey you know you had your fog machine going too much and set the alarm off um yeah. and that, that's one of the things you know again communication with the venue, fire think, alarms, it's probably a good idea to put batteries in them and make sure they're working this one uh i was um i can what speaking of dj equipment i have if you haven't done so go check out my dj fire youtube I have basically, I take the winter off because I do snow plowing in the wintertime. So I don't want to have a big snowstorm coming in and have a wedding book that weekend and be like, ah, I can't snow plow and do the wedding at the same time. So I have redid my subwoofers. Now I have seismic audio subs, but I have ordered new upgraded speakers. I uh, have got a buddy that's going to come look at the amplifiers. He thinks he can boost them a little bit, make them a little bit better. But I took the carpet off of them because i don't know if you all run wooden sub boxes or speaker boxes that have carpet on them i don't like the way the carpet attracts dirt like, on it, yeah dust. it's like a magnet hairs anything you could take a lint yeah. roller thing and still not get it all clean no so i was like you know what i'm over this you know especially sitting sitting them down on the the venue floor if there's dirt hair human hair it gets attracted it's like it's a magnet that just clings right to it you can and go I on hate, you Nathan, you can go on YouTube right now and type in how to remove dirt and dust from carpet on speakers and probably get a thousand YouTubers on there that show all their little tricks, everything from using shop vacs to, you know, using blow dryers to compressed air to you, you name it, to try and clean. I've never seen them really 100% clean. They may be clean for a short time, but shortly afterward, they get dirty. I I I I had speakers with cut with uh, fabric covers on there, and you know what? I'm glad I don't have that anymore. You know that's been a long time since I got rid of them, and I look at it and go, thank God I don't have them anymore. Now the newer speakers, even the plastic cabinets, they're putting this stuff on them. I did just do some research. It's called Dura. What's it called? Dura something. It's it's basically kind of like a 
Does anybody know what that stuff's called? Um, it's kind of like it, a waterproof, hard black sort of I paint. Consider it almost like almost like a truck bed liner. Yeah, like, like a bed a very liner material. Thin, like, very thin, like what though. I did to my subs yeah. here. So yeah, this is a, this is a product called Herculiner, and yeah. these are my 18 inch subs, and I completely stripped the um, carpet off of them. Which let me tell you, whatever glue they use does not want to let go unless you forcefully. And then taking the glue off, I I used a bottle and a half of Goo Gone between two 18 inch subs to get the glue off. So if you ever have to do this to a wooden cabinet, it's a pain, but. Does that not look better than the carpet? I mean, if something gets on here, like this piece of dust right here, there, it's gone. Wow. I spent. Looks good. <laughs> you can I actually write a line. I got, I got. You can write a line your wood cabinets uh, that even are painted already from the factory. Um, mm -hmm. I had a set of JBL um, <laughs> PRX, the uh, 635s. Yeah, PRX 635s um, that I actually took them in and got them Herculined, I actually Herculined, uh, rhino line, <laughs> and they, they, you know, they basically sanded down the stuff that's there, and they put you know, rhino line material on there. Never had a problem with it because it's much thicker than the stuff that comes from the factory from uh, JBL. It seemed like the stuff that the manufacturer put on there, be it JBL or QSC or whomever, I, I would, or even a poly cabinet, it seems very thin. And versus when you take it to a place that does that, like does truck bed lining, and you can take it over and ask them, it's not cheap, but it's like what you're doing there. That right there, I think it's is, is a much better product than now, what I, comes I put, from the factory. I put chrome corners on it. I tried to find the the, the part for the sub hole in chrome, couldn't find it. Tried to find, I did find chrome handles, but they are a lot smaller. And obviously, I would have had to reframe this back in and make the hole smaller. Uh, Mike told me I could take and uh, wire a brush and wire brush these all the way down, um, but that would be a lot of work. But yeah, I've got two coats of Herculiner on it. Um, I will say, if you have to do this in the winter time, do not do it in your house. Your whole house will smell like a whatever that it was. I had windows open, I had fans blowing, but I knew it was too cold outside for this stuff to dry, and it has to be at least sixty degree temperature. But I like it. I've got new, there's no speakers in these right now. I've got one there and one there. Um, the new speakers are actually coming out of California. But if y'all have heard the news, California is flooded right now. So um, they're actually trying to get them to come out of their New Jersey warehouse. They think they've got hopefully enough. I've ordered JBL speakers for these. Um, they're, I was looking at 1800 watt speakers. I found another set for 2800 watts. Or 2500 watt speakers so i'm hoping between that and the amplifier they sound a lot better so i just kind of wanted you know i a lot of people were thinking that looks stupid but i think it looks good i i think the the roughness it looks durable i do probably plan on doing the tops my 15 inch tops for these but uh i'm gonna wait until it warms up so i can do them outside so I don't blame you. i've I've got a question. Um, how do we know when to upgrade your speakers? So mine, like, mine are around four, uh, five years old now, plus. Um, what, what do, do, do we wait? Do we literally wait for the speaker to fail, or do we no, recone no, them? No, you never want to do that. Or, what do you, What are you using? What do you have? What speakers? Oh, uh, they're Australian brand speakers. That they don't have them over there. But I mean, they are mid price. They've been <laughs> An absolute workhorse. They've never let me down. But, you know, as I said, they're getting old. How do we know when to upgrade? What do we, you know? Do, so, we, do I recone them or do I just go out and buy new speakers? You could, it would probably cost just as much to recone them as it would to just go out. I bought two 18 inch JPL uh, 2,500 watt speakers for a little over 230 bucks shipped. Mm -hmm. But how do you know when to do it? As I said, you, obviously you don't want to wait for your speakers to fail. No. On a gear, uh, so but... what I would say, what I would say first thing first <laughs> is the manufacturer is a good one to reach out to and talk to them. Um, yeah. Also, people who repair the speakers, people who are seeing stuff that's you know been around for a while. If you're taking care of the speaker, technically that speaker could last 
30 years, 40 years. Uh, the, the cone can dry out, the glue holding the, the foam around the edge can dry out and so forth and so on. Then you're going to look at replacement drivers. If you're replacing a driver on the system, on a speaker or a subwoofer, when you replace those drivers, then you replace, you want to replace like for like. So you, you yeah, want to get yeah, re yeah, in replacement. Yeah. But if you want to upgrade sound, because technology does change, <laughs> and let's say you want to go to a line array system or you want to go to a, a bigger, you know, a 15 inch versus a 12, or you want to go down to a 12 from a 15. I would probably say every five to eight years is usually about good time because that's usually mm -hmm. there's enough change in everything and technology that you see mm -hmm. jumps in things. You see more and more uh, options there. You know, if I look at a 10 year old speaker versus now, there's a lot of things you have on a new speaker versus a 10 year old speaker. Like, you know, some mm -hmm. people want to use Bluetooth. Some people have to have the little LCD screen in the back. They can adjust a custom EQ inside the unit. The ESP. ESP power. Um, yeah. The other thing is that you don't want to wait till the speakers go because when the speakers go, then you're like rushing. I was texting someone. You don't have the, you don't have a chance to be smart and educated and say, "Hey, do I want sure. to have you know a good speaker? Do I want a good speaker that speaker?" And it gives you time yeah. to listen to what's going on, and you're not just you know, you're, you're not running out radically and getting something. Mm. Uh, and I, I see that uh, Nathan's uh, other half is over there. Hi, how are you? Welcome to the show. <laughs> this, is, this is my girlfriend. This is yep. Jessica. She's just checking in on me. No, you're not. Oh, you're not? Uh, she has a channel too. Go check it out. Yep, She's she actually... has a channel as well. <laughs> she has a great, some great content and uh, great uh, family stuff there. Always friend yeah. family friendly. I'm really looking at getting some column away arrays like the EV fifties. Like I'm thinking something along that line. I'm I'm a big supporter and a big fan of line arrays. I have the RCF, um, EV. Um, I'm I'm not EV fan. So it, it, again, it's like what kind of car you like to drive, what kind of vehicle you like to. You know, some people are diehard Toyota fans. Some people are diehard. Uh, for you would be well, Holland's gone, but we uh, diehard Ford or uh, diehard uh, diehard Honda or a diehard uh, Hyundai or whatever they're a fan of. I always say that you know, listen to them, see how you like them. But the line arrays, uh, I'm a fan for that technology because how they do sound, how they reproduce <laughs> sound, is totally different than a standard cabinet and subwoofer. It is totally. Okay. Different. Gotten rid of the horn. I think the horn is the um, on the old classic cabinets. The horn is the bit that that doesn't sound good. Well, it it, it could be really. <clears throat> and Brian S. Red has talked about this: is taking your highs. If you get your three land EQ, you take your high, and you have your mids, and you have your low. Take your mid and knock it down a little bit, so you don't get that high tweaky sound out of the tweeter. And the woofer right there is, yeah. you know, giving more mid bass. And that's when you use a three-way system speaker subwoofer, and it's they're the same brand and they're and they're they're compatible with each other. And mm. the subwoofer, the smart subwoofer, it then knows that okay, I can send a signal up to the speaker that will give the the, the woofer <laughs> in the speaker doesn't matter if it's a fifteen inch or a twelve inch or a ten inch, make it a mid bass. And then the tweeter is much more rounded sound. But the thing is that, again, how much bass do you need? I, I really very seldom say I wish I had more bass out of my RCFs. They're a 12-inch mm. driver, but they sound like a, they sound like a 15-inch subwoofer. Especially if you're someone like me who uses an external mixer, just keep the controller at a medium volume and then turn the mm. volume on the external mixer up. Well, the whole point of the external mixer is to be able to mm. manipulate the sound post controller. Like, as you know, you can't adjust the bass, mids, and highs on the controller um, past the point of your faders. Yeah, they don't have that. They don't have that ability, which they should. Yeah, it also gives me extra versatility. <laughs> my uh, Bluetooth adapter for a backup and all that stuff. It gives me See, room for all my audio stuff. 
I, I, I never use a separate mixer for, I, I go around the controller right into the speakers. I never have a problem with sound differences. I never have a problem with not having enough bass or enough mids or enough highs or enough lows and adjusting EQ. Um, I never had a problem with that, you know, and I have, yep. I, I have a Yamaha. I have also, I did the review, the unboxing of that little, um, uh, little mini mixer. And again, for that little mini mixer, yeah, I plugged in because for the gig, I had my little Hercules controller. I usually use here to DJ on Twitch. I use that with that. And it's just because the fact that we're on up three flights of stairs, we got to carry everything up with us. And I don't feel like carrying my XZ all the way upstairs or my SX2 all the way upstairs. I've done that before at that venue. And I knew going into it, I'm like, no, I won't work smarter, not harder. <laughs> That's right. Yep. So, so you guys are you guys are talking about line array stuff. I know JBL makes line array speakers, line array subs. If you don't fly those, are they still going to sound good if you set the line array sub on the ground, put a sub pole on top of it, and run a line array top off of it? Is that yes, still well, think, you, need, you need multiple heads. I think there's confusion. So I think we were talking about column arrays versus line arrays. They're different. So a column array is like your Evolve 50M. Um, your RCF, uh, like J8s, those are column arrays. Your line arrays are usually the ones that are flown in the air, but you can yeah. use technically a line array as like a normal speaker. Oh, yeah. So I think but, there's, yeah. But the funny thing is that the manufacturers will call them line arrays because they take the line yeah. array technology, the big, huge, flyable speakers, and they the take that similar cut. technology and shrink it down to a mm -hmm. man portable one piece unit. So, like, you know, Bose will call it a line array. Um, <clears throat> a lot of manufacturers uh will call them line arrays. Uh um trying to think now, uh K array line arrays. Uh I, I have a K array mm. speaker. Um it's a K array line array speaker. That's what they call it. They, that's what they call themselves. It's, it, it, but yeah, if you really look at what a true column array is, again, that's a sm small single portable, you know, a, you know, a 50, Evolve 50, or the JBL or um or the uh, any other manufacturer makes it the LD systems, the Maui Five Go, like I have, those would hmm. be column arrays. But a lot of manufacturers call them line arrays because they're using that kind of style of technology just in a small single unit versus flying fifteen speakers and four subwoofers on each side hmm. and doing like three or four rows of them to fill a whole concert hall with them and really pound hmm. it out. Well, it's already time to get off here already, guys and. I want to thank uh, Brylin here from Funky Town Entertainment. Thank you, sir, for coming in. I appreciate it so much. Kurt, DJ Dynablend from all the way from Australia. Thank you, sir. And, uh, of course, my uh, my two cohorts right here, DJ Fire and DJ Cool Thing. Uh, make sure you follow them all on social media. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Again, if you got anything else to say, make sure you go over to the uh, YouTube channel, it's a uh, TBM production DJ one. You can watch it on replay. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go on over to Twitch on Tuesday nights, watch it live and ask questions in the chat. Other than that, guys, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Peace. All See right. You, everybody. Ended there.